Hey everyone, Ramesh here. In this video, we will quickly discuss few best practices that we need to follow while developing persistence or a DAO layer. Okay. A DAO stands for data access object and it is a structural design pattern that we can use to isolate a business logic from the persistence layer. And DAO is one of the popular design pattern that we, we can use to separate out all our business logic from the persistence layer. So basically we keep all our database related stuff into a separate layer that is called persistence or a DAO layer. Okay. I have created a dedicated video on DAO design pattern and I have published on my YouTube channel. You can just check it out. Now what are the different options to develop a persistence or a DAO layer in Java community? So look at here we can use Java JDBC to develop a persistence or a DAO layer and we can use Spring JDBC and ORM frameworks such as Hibernate, MyBatis, Eclipse Link, etc. We can use Spring Data. So Spring Data provides different sub modules like Spring Data JPS, Spring Data MongoDB, Spring Data REST, Spring Data Elasticsearch, etc. So these are the options available in Java community to develop a persistence or a DAO layer. All right and we will discuss the best practices in this video so these best practices can be applied all these different options okay so let's quickly have a look into spring muc application architecture here we have front end and back end at a front end we use a ui to develop web applications and at a back end layer three layer architecture uh, we have presentation layer business layer and persistence layer we create a spring MUC controllers to handle a web request okay web request can be http get post etc all right and at a business layer we keep all our business logic into business layer and business layer is also called a service layer okay and at a persistence layer we keep all our database related code okay and we are mainly focusing on persistence layer in this video so we know that what logic we keep in different layer but what are the best practices that we need to follow in particular layer that we are going to discuss so we are going to discuss what are the best practices that we can follow to develop a persistence layer in this video separate layer for persistence logic or a database related code we should maintain a persistent logic as a separate layer and it is called a DAO layer or a persistence layer so try to keep all your persistent logic into a separate layer and we commonly call it as persistence layer or a DAO layer. So don't mix business logic and database related logic into a single file. So always try to isolate your business logic from the persistent logic so that it will increase your readability and maintainability. Okay. So remember this best practice, always try to create a separate layer for persistence logic or a database related code. Typically we create a DAO class and we keep all our database related code into that DAO class. Okay. So this is the best practice. This is the first best practice that I would like to suggest you always try to keep a persistence logic or a database related logic into a separate layer okay the second best practice is in persistence logic we should follow table per DAO class pattern for example for every table we will create a dedicated DAO class and this DAO class is responsible to perform operations with that table so this will improve the readability of your code okay so try to create a dedicated DAO class for every table. For example, consider we have a user table and for user table, we can create a user DAO class and we keep all the database related operations of user table in a user DAO class. Similarly, consider we have a customer table and we can keep all customer related database operations in customer DAO class. Similarly, for roles table and account details table so we can create a dedicated DAO class for per table so this will improve a readability of the code so whenever we want to change something related to 
user then we can directly go to the user DAO class and we can make the changes and let us say in future again we need to change something related to account details then we can go to the account details DAO class and we can make changes over there so we no need to go through the uh, entire uh, code base all right so if we maintain table per DAO class pattern then this will improve uh, readability of the application okay so look at here one more industrial standard best practice like we typically create an interface and we keep all the uh, methods in our interface and we create a class which implements this interface for example here we have a user DAO interface it has all the database methods which are related to user and we create a user DAO IMPL class which implements this interface and it will provide implementation for all the methods which are there in a user DAO. So typically this is one of the best practices that we usually follow while developing persistence layer or DAO layer. Similarly for customer, we create an interface like customer DAO interface and we keep all the database uh, related uh, methods or operations in this interface and we create a class customer DAO IMPL which implements customer DAO interface similarly for roles we create an interface uh, like roles DAO and we create a class which implements role roles DAO interface so this is typically a industrial standard best practice that you can follow while developing persistence layer or a DAO layer all right so just keep in mind uh, these are the conventions that you can f use in your uh, projects all right great let's explore few more best practices like you should have at least one primary key per table so whenever we create a primary key for table then always use a best practices to create a primary key for example you can use a long data type and you can use a sequences to create a primary key and primary key should be unique uh, in a table all right so next is auditing columns so whenever you plan to use auditing for table then try to use these columns so these are the commonly used columns auditing columns for table in a typical enterprise applications all right for example created date created by updated date and updated by all right so these are the commonly used auditing columns for table in enterprise applications Alright guys, so these are the best practices that I usually follow while developing persistence or a DAO layer. I have created a lots of projects and I have hosted a source code of projects on my GitHub repository and I have used these best practices to develop a persistence or a DAO layer. Let me quickly show you the projects that I have developed. So look at here, this is the to-do application uh, which I have developed using GSP, Servlet, JDBC and MySQL database so let me quickly show you so look at here this is a DAO layer uh, inside a DAO layer I have key kept all the database related logic for example so this is a to do DAO so all the methods which are related to to do entity I have kept inside a DAO, uh, to do DAO so look at here these are the methods and I have created a to do DAO IMPL class which implements to do DAO interface and it implements all the methods okay so to do DAO class is specific to to do entity or to do table and similarly user DAO and login DAO so in this way you can create a separate layer uh, that is a persistence or a DAO layer and you can keep all your database re related logic okay so in this particular application I have your GDBC to develop a DAO layer or a persistence layer let's take a one more uh, example over here so this is a user management application that I have developed using GSP servlet hibernate and MySQL database in this particular application I have used hibernate framework to develop a DAO layer so basically I have created a DAO package within a DAO package I have created user DAO class it has all the database uh, you know stuff with respect to user entity Let's have a look into one more application that is Spring Boot Timelip web application. 
So within this application, I have used Spring Data GPA to develop a persistence or a DAO layer. So we can use Spring Data GPA to reduce a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop a DAO layer or a persistence layer. So we basically need to create an interface. It extends JPA repository and look at here, we pass an entity name and the data type of the primary key. So this is the best practice that Spring Data GPA follows like uh, here they have created a repository per table. Okay, great. Alright guys, these are the few examples that follows uh, best practices to develop a persistence or a DAO layer. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Whenever I will publish such videos, you will get notified. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.